On this episode of Rock the Yard, we take a neglected chunk of California backyard and turn it into a homeowner's aquatic dream with three waterfalls and a huge organic koi pond. You can never get too curvy. Sweating, baby. Rock the yard. We are gonna do something amazing. Drum roll, please. A koi pond. Yes, I said a koi pond. Now, most people shiver at the thought of making their own water feature in their backyard. It's actually quite easy. Now, the great thing is, since this is my video series and I don't have business affairs or ad executives or sponsors telling me what to do, I can show you my favorite products that I use every day when I do these kind of projects. In this case, it's Total Pond. Well, I know it's gonna sound a little bit like a commercial and I promise you it's not, but when you find something of quality and a value that you use every day in your business, you wanna refer and you wanna tell people, right? Total Pond, I love the company and I love the products because they're DIY and homeowner friendly. Everything you see here can be bought at select Home Depots across the country or homedepot.com. This is an EP DM pond skin or liner. Um, this is a heavy duty material that's a lot like roofing material on a commercial building or truck inner tube tires. It is heavy, it's heavy duty, and it has a 20 year warranty. Because our pond will be about 900 to 1,000 gallons, we're using this cartridge filter, okay? I know it looks like a big thing of protein powder. Actually, this is a filter. Water goes in, filters, and clean water comes out. Kind of like the human heart. We're also gonna use a filter kit with a pump. This is for smaller ponds, but since we're using two filters together, these things are gonna keep it nice and sparkly clean. Flexible hose, also provided by Total Pond, and a 560 gallon per hour pump, a little bit smaller. We're gonna use that for one of our waterfalls. We've got a 950 gallon per hour pump. That's moving a lot of water. That works in conjunction with the cartridge filter, and this has a UV clarifier. That's an ultraviolet light that helps keep the water clean and keep the algae out. This, this is a lifesaver. This is a foam sealant, or what I like to call waterfall pond foam, okay? This is a gooey, sticky black foam that's gonna lock down a lot of our rocks and other things. When this stuff dries, it's nearly impossible to get off the liner. It makes a chemical bond, and I've got about 20 cans to work with. When we get it all done, we're gonna wanna light it up so the fish look beautiful at night. We've got beautiful low voltage lights that look like rocks. I said low voltage because that's important. They work off of 12 volts with a converter. That way you don't burn a lot of electricity when your lights are running. And last but certainly not least, a new product by Total Pond called the Aerator with LED lights. This thing makes a lot of little bubbles like you'll see in a fish tank in a home. That helps keep the algae at bay and it's got LED lights in it. Just one more thing to bling out the pond. Well, we've got all of our products in place, so what you need is some friends, some cold drinks, and pizza, because the hardest part is coming up, and that is digging a hole. If you don't have a couple of cans of this in your arsenal, trust me, when you do backyard projects, you're gonna need it. This is inverted tip marker paint or upside down paint. It's for marking stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out a free form line where this koi pond's gonna go, then we're gonna dig a hole. Okay, remember this is your koi pond. It's all about artistic interpretation. Just make sure that the size is right for the amount of fish you're gonna put in it and that the liner fits properly. Now that we got the layout done, we're gonna dig a hole. But first, let me show you a couple features that I put in the paint as well. What we're doing now is putting in some areas where we're gonna have little shelves and that's for aquatic plants. If you don't have these shelves, the plants will be at the very bottom and obviously they're not gonna be tall enough to break the water. So in any of the corners, Again, artistic interpretation. Put a couple of shells for your plants, and one more thing. This is a deep well, very important, because critters are gonna try to eat your fish like a free sushi meal, okay? So the deep well will provide cover for the fish. Also, when it's hot, it gives them a place to hang out in the shade. So we'll dig down almost three feet, and then we'll put a big piece of flagstone with an opening in front so the fish can go down, underneath, and hide out. Okay, the easy and fun part is done. Now the only hard part of the whole process of building a koi pond is gonna happen. It is digging a huge hole. 
In real time, that's like six or seven hours with four of your friends. So again, make sure that you have some cold drinks and pizza and put them to work. We've got to get a liner in this thing to make it a true waterproof vessel. But first, all the debris that's sharp has to come out of here. So, we've got a rake. Well, maybe you have some old carpet laying around your garage or maybe your neighbor has some. We're going to use this to protect our liner. If we missed any rocks or any roots or anything sharp, this will take care of it. So, put your mesh or mat side down. That simple. Throw it in the bottom. Then our liner will sit on top of it. There will be a little bit of give and anything that was going to poke it will be protected by the carpet. Ready to open up our liner and I'm going to tell you something that could ruin your day and this whole project. A razor knife. Do not open the plastic with a razor knife. Throw this thing away and just tear it open with your hands. We spread out the liner careful to overlap at ground level and under the stone coping to avoid leakage. Rock work is actually quite easy. My advice is just jump in and be creative. We use pre-mixed bag mortar from Home Depot to lock our rocks and boulders together. As you can see, this thing's really starting to look like an organic pond. We've got the rock work in, which is gonna be the basis for all of our natural coping. By the way, this is indigenous rock. That means it's from this area. It's a brown sandstone. That's important because you want the pond to look like it was born right here in your backyard. masonry sponges to clean out the excess mortar. A few things to consider when you're building a pond are what will live in here. Now our homeowner wants to have fish, probably koi, and he loves turtles. So we've got a little sunning platform right here for our turtles. This is just above water level. That way the turtles can slide on up here and get a suntan. The rock work is coming along nicely on our koi pond and it looks organic and amazing. So it's time to start thinking about filtration. Now filtration can be a little bit intimidating, but not if you use a company like Total Pond. So go to www.totalpond.com. There's a lot of technical information about what kind of equipment to use for the environment your pond's in and how many gallons you're gonna be using. I went to Total Pond's website and I used their calculations there to find out we have about 1,000 to 1,200 gallons of water in this pond. So we're using a dual filtration system. We're gonna start with this. It is a filter canister. Now this thing is small, but it is tough and it is mighty. It's got some great proprietary things inside of here, including filter pads and a thing called bio balls. Now bio balls help promote the growth of beneficial bacteria that'll help your fish and your plants, and it's all inside of here. Really simple to plumb, actually. The pump goes in here, with a one inch flexible tubing, you can get this from Total Pond as well, and your discharge or your flow out comes from the top. 
Now to go with our cartridge filter, I'm using a good size pump. This is a 950 gallon per hour pump that has a really great feature. It's a two in one, meaning it has a UV clarifier. There is a bulb in here that uses ultraviolet light to help clean out some of the algae and bacteria in your water. That is a great thing to have because it's just another element of filtration that we need. Easy, you plumb this thing with the same one inch flex right into the bottom of that canister. So the first line of defense in keeping this whole pond beautiful and clean and healthy for our fish is the canister and the 900 gallon per hour pump with our UV clarifier. But since that system only does 900 gallons and we have 1,000 to 1,200, we've got a backup system. We're using this baby. Now this is a filter kit with a pump. This is an all-in-one kit. So the pump, our bio balls, our filter elements are all on the inside and we have very simple plumbing. We just plumb right into the nipple here there's a diverter valve and water comes out of the top. So you've got a fountain feature as well. So that completes the filtration, but we're doing three waterfalls, a large waterfall in the back, a medium waterfall right in the center of the pond with a stream, and a little tributary waterfall to help with aeration. We need pumps. So we're also gonna use total ponds. We're using 560 gallon per hour. That is a big enough pump to work these waterfalls. We'll use a couple of these. And the best part about these are very high efficiency. Lots of water flow for very little electricity. So we'll hook this up, let these babies flow. So to wrap it up, we're doing a dual filtration system. Very, very simple with the Total Pond products. We've got our canister, we've got our 950 gallon per hour pump. It's a two in one with a UV clarifier. And we have our all in one filter kit with a little fountain nozzle. This is gonna make sure that our 1200 gallon maximum pond is gonna be clean and beautiful and safe for our fish. And by the way, we're gonna put turtles in it too. Each one of these pumps actually has a plug end on it for a 110 outlet. We're gonna do something different. We're gonna hardwire five pumps directly to a pool box. So, really simple, we gotta cut off the end. Getting close, we're putting the final touches on the waterfalls, finishing the rock work in the bottom of the pond, completing our coping stones, and adding pebbles for a natural stream effect. The hose is in and we're filling this baby up. The pond really comes to life when we add the green in the form of tropical plants. Now that we've got all the hydraulics in and the pumps are running, it's very important that we run the system for about a week before we put our critters in there. No fish and no turtles without the chlorine or chloramines coming out of the water. That's why we're using our chlorine remover. Now you can get this on TotalPond.com as well. And that's how you build a koi pond. In just four days with some good friends and some amazing materials, we made a beautiful organic waterscape right here in this once dusty backyard. I'm Billy Darian. I'll catch you next time on Rock This Yard.